Hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Um, today we're going to do something inside of the Akai Force. Um, I've sold a few packs recently and I've had some people asking about um, installation instructions. So I'm going to cover three things. Uh, one, I'm going to cover how you can use um, your Akai Force to load um, up a drum kit with samples quickly and easily from your SSD or your SD card. In this case, I have an SD card. I don't have an SSD in my Force because um, I wasn't using it for a while, so I kind of um, thought my SSD was better suited for other gear. But um, I'll probably be using the Force for the next month or so and uploading some content. So yeah, good stuff for you guys. First thing I'm going to cover is how to uh, populate a drum kit using the Force only. And then I'm going to show you how to do it uh, using Ableton Live. So if you bought an Akai Force, you at least got Ableton Live 11 light which has the drum rack in it and you can use that to populate all 128 pads in a drum kit uh, quickly and easily um, so i'm going to show you how to do that uh, even if you don't use a computer for anything else i recommend doing that i'm also going to show you a little bit about navigating um, inside of these folders so that you can see how things work a lot of times if you open up an expansion you'll see hundreds and hundreds of files in there and how do you sort through things just use the little icons and, and you can go to program files or drum kits or key groups or or any um, individual waves you can do all kinds of things in there just to isolate just those files so i'll show you a little bit about that um, there's going to be more co uh, force content this week uh, you can go to ghostwrittenclips.com which is in the description and you can pick up my force packs or even get free force packs there force expansions etc etc um, also like and, um, and subscribe uh, like like this video and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out and um, I know a lot of people say that but there's a reason why we say it um, YouTube is, is fickle with who they show these videos to and I think that I have useful content uh, I promise I'll bring you good content um, hope uh, everybody's holiday so far is amazing Merry Christmas to you all let's get started Okay, so um, here we are in the Akai Force, and um, this is a weird angle, but it's what I got. So let's open up an empty project, and uh, let's get rid of these two tracks by using... Well, actually, we didn't even have to do that, but nonetheless, we're going to open up a drum program. And here we are in a drum program. If we go to Notes, you'll see that we have a huge empty program with nothing on it. Okay, so what you want to do is select the first note that you want to put... Uh, a sample onto, then go to load, go to places, and I have, um, as you can see, there's all kinds of stuff in this, in this folder. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of garbage. Uh, what I need is a folder that I made, so I'm going to use this, this folder icon here, and it's called Drums Force, I believe, is what I, yep, there it is. I'm going to open it up. And inside, there's nothing. It's because I have this set. So what we're going to do is go to individual waves. And at the very end, I have five kits here. I'm going to put the 808 style kick on this pad. So I'm going to select that and hit load. Go to the next pad, and I'll put the regular kick. Load. Next pad, I'll put the snare. Load. Very, very easy. Next pad, I'm going to hit uh, hi-hat load open hat load okay that's all in, you need to know you can go as far as you want okay you can use the shift and up and down octave buttons to access more pads okay but as it stands okay so that's that now let's go into Ableton Live and I can show you how to populate 128 of these Pretty much instantaneously, just with drag and drop. Okay, so here we are in Ableton. Let's drag a drum rack over to a track. All right, now down here you can see there's 128 pads. And we can just go into our audio samples. Let's go to this uh, Vengeance Electro Essentials, get some kick drums. Now I can hear these auditioning. Let's just grab a few over and um, let's just grab samples and drag them and drop them into the places that we want. 
I'm gonna spread them out a little bit. I don't want all the bass drums to be in one huge section. You know, I want to be able to play a, a different, um, somewhat of a kit in each octave. So uh, let's spread these out, do some bass drums in some spots and some snares and hats, etc., etc. Some claps and uh, okay, let's 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 populate this. Okay, so now you can see um, these are not warped. The whole thing is populated, filled with a bunch of stuff. You notice that none of these are warped. Sometimes, if you see these warped, um, you definitely want to turn the warp off before you export. All right, now we're going to go to Save Live Set, and we're going to save it on the Force. So I'm going to scroll down my PC and find my Force and open it up. I'm going to save it inside here. And um, ah, new folder. Um, you know what? What should I name this? Well, truth is we really don't need a new folder. We'll call it test live. You know what? Cancel that. Let's get rid of this folder. I'm just going to, because it creates a folder. I, I just wasn't thinking. So get rid of it. And um, we'll just create a project called Test Drums. Save. And now we want to, once it's saved, we want to go back in. Where's this file? And we want to see it's already in that location. We want to hit Collect All and Save. And it's going to ask, you want to choose all, yes, and then hit it. And then basically what that does is it copies all of the wave file data from its remote location into the new location. So it's going to transfer all this data. What I was talking about with the warp engine before, um, sometimes if you slice to MIDI, right? If you ever take a, a large wave and slice to MIDI, then it automatically warps the hits inside the, uh, the drum rack. You don't, you don't want that. But anyway, uh, we're just going to wait for this uh, for a moment. It's just scrolling around, says not responding, but it actually is doing the work. It's just not showing you. Um, and it's a little frustrating, but it takes a little bit. Um, we're going to go, as soon as this is done, we're going to go back to standalone mode in the forest, and I'm going to show you what to do to get this drum kit permanently in your drum library. Okay, so now we're back in standalone mode. I've got a new project. I'm just going to open an empty project, and then I'm going to go to load. And I'm going to, in places, I'm going to find that what we just did, which is the test drums project, okay? And uh, that's the Ableton file that they created that I dragged over here or whatever. If I open it up, there's the Ableton Live set right there, ALS.ALS. We're going to load that, and it's going to import all of that collect all and save those waves that we that we um, saved with the project go to matrix and you can see it's got the first two midi tracks we didn't even need those in the drum track though if we go to note you'll see it's got all those vengeance drum samples which is awesome right and uh, from the from here actually remember you can use shift to go up and down and access the various banks, all 128 pads. Okay, so there we've done it. What we want to do is we want to save this as a location you know, to a location. So we'll save drum program in places. And earlier, um, what I did drums force, where I had all those other um, where I had all those other samples. Um, I actually did this earlier just to test it out. I don't know why, but uh, no, cancel. No, I want to open up that and inside. I have it already saved called Vengeance Trumps, but we'll just save it anyway. V E N G E A N C E. Nope. OK. 
Come on. Vengeance drums. Do it. It's going to ask if I want to overwrite because like I said, I already did it early. Yeah, we'll overwrite. Now you can see all of the samples are being saved to a drum program. Taking a second. It takes a little while. Save 128 wave, wave files. Okay. Now in here, if I go to my folder browser, I can get rid of all of this. I don't need that anymore, right? Test drums project, hold down shift and delete file. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And it's gone. And still have my vengeance pack. If I go to new project, empty, whatever, I can load places. I can go to the um, drums force open. And if I go to drum, drum icon, right? Drum, <laughs> drum track icon, there it is. And I can load. And it's got all my stuff. So much easier than adding these one by one. I recommend the Ableton Live. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm gonna be showing you within a day or two, uh, just basically starting another uh, Force, a Kai Force uh, track from scratch and just pounding it out and then um, developing it and then performing it. So yeah, hope everybody uh, gets into my Force content. It's, um, it's been a, an up and down relationship with this machine. Okay, everybody be blessed.